In this Kotlin on Android tutorial, we're going to be returning the web title back from the dialog to the main activity using an interface. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, so moving forward with our web view tutorial series where we actually do return the title back to our main activity and then after that we can actually switch across to any item in our web history. Okay, and again we have my website here and if you do want to start this tutorial from this particular episode instead of starting at the beginning of the series, you will need to sign up to my free membership where you can go through the article here and you also get instructions of how to get the code from GitHub with an accompanying video to help you out with that. Anyway, enough of that shame and this plug, let's move across to the tutorial itself. So we're going to jump across into Android Studio and I'm going to go into my dialogue fragment first of all and inside here I'm going to create um, an interface basically. Um, it'll have to get created at the inside the top of your dialogue fragment and you just call it interface and what should I call this? I'll just call this interface web history you need the curly brackets from that once you have your web history you can then provide functions for that so I'm going to set up a function here just with the fun keyword for Kotlin and I want to use a particular name for that so I'm just going to get that from my web page so um, web page selected so we'll just call this function web page selected And it's going to take a string value which um, stands for the actual web page or web title. Let's call it web title. And it will be a string. And that's it for our interface. Now we want to create a variable to represent that interface. And so I'm going to just do that underneath here. Now we can't actually initialize interface just yet because it um, hasn't yet been implemented and this particular web page selected function will need to be overridden and implemented in the calling activity so basically we can't initialize it just at this stage so what we can do is just call what's provided to us in Kotlin called the late init variable so it's a variable that hasn't yet been initialized which is expected to be initialized later on so from here I can just I'm just going to call this web history And it's going to be of the type of our interface, which is web history. Okay, so that's now been done. So now I'm actually going to set up the place where it will actually get initialized. Um, I'll just create a, another function down below here. So this is going to be an overridden function called on attach. So this gets called when the this particular fragment or fragment dialog is attached to the calling activity this will be called okay so then it's just a matter of initializing our web history variable so we'll call web history and we initialize it with the context provided to us okay and we're not we're going to need to call what's in, referred to as in Kotlin an explicit cast so we use as and we'll call it the web history. This is not yet being autocompleted, but it won't give you an error if you type that. Okay, because it's an explicit cast, we should really wrap around a try catch harness to catch any exceptions if this particular basically if the if I get select this here, if this function is not overridden in the calling activity. Um, we should catch that and set an exception because um, we'll have no value for our web history. So I'm just going to put a try catch around that. And I'm going to change that to a class cast exception will be generated. 
and we do want to get back to where I was, we do want to display that. Okay, so everything's been successful and the calling activity has overridden the function, interface function, this should work fine. Then it's just a matter of calling this when we, when we have a value for it. And I just want to comment out this line here. And now I can actually call it, so it's the web, his, oh, web history of, uh, variable. And then we can just call our web page selected. And inside here, I just want to pass in the history list. This holds our value, and we will need to specify the element position for that as well. Just like this. Okay, so we've now set up the interface in our dialog fragment. We will need to actually implement it now in our calling activity. So we'll jump across to the main function, the main activity. Okay, so we need to implement it here. I'm just going to um, put a comma here. Notice the colon there that that we can also use that to implement an interface. So if I just call our what's the name of the history dialog fragment and then call our interface. Okay, we're now seeing an error error here because we haven't yet overridden that function in our interface. And basically, I'm just selecting my alt enter, and that will tell me to implement the members. And I'll go yes. And this is the interface function that we just created before, so I'll select OK for that. And now we just need to do something in that. So, yes, we will. OK, so I'm just going to get it's going to be very similar to the way we did it in. The uh, get back history and get forward history. Um, we'll just generate a copy back forward list first, and then we'll traverse down there and then set it to our web view. Okay, so let's just set up our web history uh, value for that. You can get from the web view. Call copy back forward list. So we've got that now. Now I'm going to go set up a range for that, but very similar of what is what we've done in previous tutorials. Start off from zero until, so we leave out the uh, end element, and now call our uh, web history and the size of the web history. So we can now traverse through our array. What we want to do is check the web titles in our array to see if they match the one that's been returned from the dialogue fragment. So I'm just going to go to the end of there. I'm going to do a couple of things in there, so we need the curly brackets. OK, so we'll do the check now. So do a check with an if. So if, now we'll call our web history, um, get item at index and pass an i because that's going to carry on changing. Now we can call title and check it equals the what's the parameter name here web title and put some curly brackets in there okay so if that matches it means we've found the correct index that holds the uh, the location of where we want to go to. So it's just a matter of calling our web view object. And just let me quickly check the name for that. I've kind of forgotten it. And it's we'll call basically web view go back or forward in steps. And this is actually an offset from the increment counter. And so basically, I can just call i minus our web history current index. And this is actually going to actually take out to the particular web page in our history, setting this offset. Um, I'll just break out of this, and then we'll go back there and look at the documentation. 
So if I click F1 on this particular position there, and I drag across the help box, it's fetching. Okay, so this go back or forward goes through the history item that is a number of steps away from the current item. So notice we are referring to the current index, which is the current root, which points us to the current item. The step is negative if backward or forward. Is negative if backward and positive if forward. And so that's why we set the little offset there. That will provide us a negative or positive number depending where we are from this current index. Okay, that should be the only changes we need to make. So let's run this to see if it works. Okay, the application's now started, and I have gone through the ver uh, various web pages to generate a history now. So what I'm going to do is do a long press on the back history. And as with the previous tutorial, we have got the dialogue showing there. And what I want to return is return back to the home page, which will be at the very bottom of my list. So if I select that. And we've gone back to my home page there. I know it's my home page because I've just implemented a responsive slider and you probably saw it slide there. So that is my home page. Okay, now what we want to do is to go back to where we were because I didn't mean to do that. So I'm just going to hold and long press on the forward arrow. And I want to go back to the Kotlin on Android web view tutorial. And Kotlin Android web, uh, web View tutorial there. Oh, I haven't signed into the membership, so I can't get access to the source code or the code descriptions, unfortunately. Okay, so that does prove that our functionality is working on our, our web history functionality is working on this particular application. This completes the Kotlin and Android development tutorial where we create an interface to return the web page title from the dialogue fragment back to the calling a main activity. Um, we saw that was quite straightforward. Care does mean need to be taken that we are actually initializing our interface object and we did that in the fragment inter fragment dialogue on attach function on attach function and we did have to override the interface and the main activity as well and implement the overridden uh, function for that. And that concludes this tutorial. Um, if, if you do want to get the source code for this, the source code will be posted into my web page. You will need to sign up for free membership for that. And there will be a video showing you how you can get the code changes for that as well, which is good if you're new to Android or new to Kotlin or new to development. Um, we do. I do provide as much information on how to get the source code to do these tutorials as possible. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. If you want to get notified, notified of future tutorials that I'm working on, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. And so thank you for taking the time to watch this one. Bye for now.